time, keeping my eye on Clint Tom, watching each move he make. Cause every slither he takes sort of reminds No one can make an intelligent decision without being properly informed. This is why this world like wants to control the media. This is why media hype can take you up, take you down. So you don't know anymore who's really good because the media can make a wicked man look good and make a good man look evil. That is why. Yo, 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 you are watching a special edition of the Final Call News Hour. I'm your man, Herman Muhammad, your host for this program. And of course, the Final Call News Hour is the part of the Final Call newspaper, which you can visit at www.finalcall.com. This afternoon, this beautiful afternoon, we are coming out of volume number 32. Issue number 43, which reads, Angry and outraged, frustrated protesters take to the streets as aftermath of Zimmerman verdict reverberates across America. Where will it end? And, of course, this is in response or coverage of the uh, recent verdict in the George Zimmerman case of not guilty. As a result, the people took to the streets um, to, to, to really just let the people know, or let the world know that uh, they were outraged. Now, the first story that we're going to deal with comes out of, again, this issue of the final call. And it appears on page two. And the article is entitled, Race Talk or Pointless Dialogue. And it's written by uh, Sister Starla Muhammad, one of the brilliant, beautiful writers of the Final Call newspaper, which is the biggest, baddest, boldest, blackest newspaper on the planet. And I just want to read a little bit of it because our president, President Obama, he responded, of course, after the verdict, after the people took to the streets, he felt it necessary to come out and speak to the issue Um uncharacteristically so, I might add. So, it reads here. Remarks delivered July 19th at the White House by President Barack Obama, in which he directly talked about the murder of Trayvon Martin and how blacks view it through the historical injustice black Americans and particularly black men and boys face daily in the U.S. brought glaring and starkly different reactions from the public. Let's get a picture of our brother president so we know exactly who we're talking about. We really shouldn't be confused by now. We all know that the president of these United States is, per, is President Barack Hussein Obama. And Mr. Obama said, Trayvon Martin could have been me 35 years ago. There are very few African-American men in this country who haven't had the experience of being followed when they were shopping in a department store. That includes me, said Mr. Obama. There are very few African-American men who haven't had the experience of walking across the street and hearing the locks click on the doors of cars. That happens to me, at least before I was a senator. There are very few African Americans who haven't had the experience of getting on an elevator and a woman clutching her purse nervously and holding her breath until she had a chance to get off. That happens often. Responses to the president's words were echoed. The reality facing young black men garnered many reactions. Slews of right wing and conservative pundits, both black and white, through multi media platforms, denigrated Mr. Obama. Now, I don't, now, I don't want to go too much into um, the madness that was said in response to President Obama's 
comments, um, the criticisms that were levied uh, towards him from both black and white, I really um, found it refreshing that our president would speak towards the issue with such candor. Um, but obviously, um, he was holding back, <laughs> which he tends to do when it comes to matters of race. Um, I know Cornell West went in on him quite hard. Tyler Smiley went in on him quite hard. Um, but, but we don't want to do that here on the Final Call News Hour. We know and understand that uh, President Obama is in a very precarious situation being the President of these United States and the President of all people, not just black people. With that being said, that does not let him off of the hook. Um, it is our fault that President Obama hasn't done anything for us. And I mean our fault, um, I mean black people. We voted for President Obama, according to the statistics, in overwhelmingly um, incredible numbers. The first election in 2008, I believe black people came out and voted 95% uh, Obama. The second election in uh, 2012, we came out and we voted even in more record numbers. I think we voted, he got about 97% of the black electorate. Um, let me just say that <clears throat> to have a black president, that's a beautiful thing, but let's not get it twisted. It's nothing but symbol. It is symbol without substance. And I echo the words of my leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, when I say that it is symbol without substance. But we, it's our fault because we came out and we voted in record numbers for our brother. However, we never demanded anything of him. And so black people have to become more politically astute. We have to be become more politically sophisticated so that we can make demands on our politicians um, in the future. But hopefully we won't have to worry about that for too much longer. The next piece, let me just jump it around. This is a, this is a uh, condensed Final Call News Hour. We just want to get back into the groove of things. Just start showing that the Final Call is right on point when it comes to uh, these issues dealing with our people and throughout the entire world. The next piece comes on page three. And it, uh, and it uh, again deals with Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. And it reads, Justice for Trayvon ignites a new mix new movement say activists and it's written by our beautiful sister who writes on the west coast national correspondent sister charlene muhammad who could be reached at twitter or on twitter at sister charlene give you a picture of mr zimmerman and let me give you a picture of just some of the protests that took place as a result of his acquittal and I'll just give you a cover of the paper. How about that? But here's another one. Trayvon Martin Rally. And I'm going to just read it, the first uh, paragraph. Angry protesters took the streets with demonstrations, demonstrations, excuse me, marches, read-ins, and prayer vigils in more than 100 cities for a national day of action. The protest came one full week after a jury in Sanford, Florida, acquitted George Zimmerman of killing unarmed Florida teen Trayvon Martin. From New York to Los Angeles, from Miami to Baltimore, people in hoodies and waving banners depicted, depicting the black youth's photo called on the Justice Department to file federal criminal civil rights charges against Mr. Zimmerman. They demanded a repeal of stand your ground laws, which permits use of deadly force if feeling threatened, even when retreat is possible. They also demanded an end to racial profiling of black males by law enforcement and vigilantes. Interesting, 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 powerful stuff. And again, that, that article appears on page three of the Final Call newspaper written by Sister Charlene. And let me just say this. 
because you're going to find these articles in the final call and the final call has some very extensive um, coverage in regards to these matters um, very powerful uh, newspaper that you must pick up and you can pick it up um, like I said, you can get the online edition at www.finalcall.com or locally here in Denver where we broadcast from, where Devil on the Run Studios, where I'm sitting right now, broadcast from. We, you can get it at Supreme Style Barbershop. That's at 7520 East Colfax Avenue in Denver, Colorado. But let me just say this about um, demonstrating because it's a beautiful thing for our people to express their feelings about issues regarding Trayvon Martin. May Allah be pleased with him. It's a beautiful thing for us to get out and, 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 and lean on one another for support in tragic times such as these. It's a beautiful time for us to call attention to unjust laws like the Stand Your Ground law which, by the way, George Zimmerman did not use at the trial. But, with that said, we shouldn't find ourselves out in the streets protesting blindly and aimlessly. And this is just my opinion. You know, the Final Call News Hour is a place where you're going to get news and commentary. So as a commentator, this is the commentary of Brother Herman Muhammad. You shouldn't find yourself out there blindly protesting. You should only participate in protests or things of that nature if there is a clear and stated aim. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to march and protest and sit in and shout in and uh, cry for justice and never receive anything. In return, except for a waste of time and energy, maybe a few uh, news clips or newspaper articles, but at the end of it, nothing comes out of it if you don't have a clear objective. So being a follower of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we don't make moves until and unless we have a stated, clear objective. And so I just want to say that to our, to our brothers and sisters who are out there uh, protesting that it's okay. You know, we had protests here locally. Um, some beautiful brothers that I know helped to plan and put on these protests, and I applaud them for that. And during these protests, there's, of course, a lot of posturing. There's a lot of people coming out stating their agenda that really don't have anything to do with the Trayvon Martin case. But there were some positive things that came out of it. There were brothers who raised funds to send to uh, Sabrina Fulton or to Tracy Martin or to the family of Trayvon Martin. And that is a clear and stated purpose. I applaud that. Um, but I just want to say to us, you know, again, let's have a let's be clear about what we're doing. The, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in this case, reminds me of that. You know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam, and the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he said, the messenger, who you're looking at right now, that in regards to the race problem, which clearly this case is a case about race, make no bones about it. They try and say that it's not, but it absolutely is. He said, the best and only solution for our people is separation. And, you know, people scoff at that. People ridicule and, and mock the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad for making that statement and taking that stance. But it stands true. We're living in the time where we're still fighting for equal justice under the law in this country. When, and, and in the case of Sanford, people don't really know this. Shout outs to a lot of my brothers on the internet like uh, Tariq Nasheed and other brothers who point this out. Sanford was a town that was called a sundown town. Not even 30, 40 years ago. Where black people would be questioned or were not allowed to be on the streets after the sun went down. 
there were uh, tons of towns throughout the South that had these sort of laws that are still on the books that really haven't been ratified. And the prosecution, of course, didn't bring this up for obvious reasons. In my view, they threw the case. But my point is, George Zimmerman and those white women who acquitted uh, him know these rules that black people can't be walking around town after sundown in towns like Sanford. And you, and you still have these towns throughout the country. And so it, it was, I was, when the verdict came through, I wasn't surprised. I, like many others, was disappointed, but I certainly wasn't surprised. And you shouldn't be either. So, again, you know, uh, these stories appear, and that, that, that's commentary too. That piece doesn't appear in the final call, but this story about justice for Trayvon igniting a new movement uh, for activism, uh, that does appear on page three in the final call news uh, paper. But that was, again, my commentary. <laughs> now, the next piece I want to deal with is, is of crucial importance and really my reason for doing this show. And we're going to be back on the air. We're going to be coming to you, um, inshallah, every week with um, these editions of the Final Call News Hour to just to let you know what's in our great and wonderful paper, The Final Call, because this is the most widely circulated black-owned and operated publication in the world and also is the communications organ for the nation of Islam. So it's, it's, an, it's a very important paper and in a climate, in an economic climate where newspapers are dying, the final call is still thriving because of the truth that is published in it. So, you know, pick that up. But the next piece we want to deal with comes out of, appears on page 20. And if you know anything about the Final Call newspaper, you will find that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam, his article always appears on page 20, I mean page 19, excuse me. And his star student, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, his article always appears on page 20. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is also the publisher of the Final Call newspaper, in, in case you didn't know. And here's a picture of our beloved minister. So his article, and I don't want to go into it too much because I want you to log on to NOI.org and watch where this article is being uh lifted from and that this article is entitled the time and what must be done now this is a 52 week lecture series that is being broadcast every single week at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and it's an hour long. You can watch it at www. There's a website on your screen dot noi dot org backslash the time or just click on www.noi.org and then click on it when you see the uh, icon come across your screen. This uh, historic lecture series really is revelation in my view. It is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, piecing apart the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in such a way to where we'll have clarity forever, if I must say so myself. This beautiful uh, brother has taken, taken it upon himself to... Uh, go deep into the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for the world to see the truth and the validity and the universal application of these teachings. Um, it has just been uh, incredible to watch these lectures every single week. Um, I try not to miss one. Well, I haven't missed one because 
due to technology if you miss it at at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time you can always go back and watch it you can also watch these uh, this historic lecture series and this particular the one that appears in this particular issue is entitled how Satan came into existence <laughs> I mean who could teach you on that no one but the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But a very powerful, powerful um, lecture. Again, I don't want to lift anything from it for this broadcast because I think it would do injustice to the broadcast that the minister is putting on himself. So what I'd like for you to do is just go to uh, www.noi.org backslash the time and view it for yourself because it's an awesome awesome lecture series and you will not be disappointed um, last piece before we get out of here and again this is commentary for the most part I'm just telling you a little bit about the stories that appear in this great newspaper the final call and I'm giving you my opinion because that's just what I want to do <laughs> but anyway this last piece appears on page let me find it here should have had it mapped out but when you read when you go into the final call newspaper make sure that you read every single article because every single article you will be able to pull something from it and this last article appears on page 29 of the Final Call newspaper. And it deals with this young brother right here. I don't know if you all have forgotten him, but this is a picture of Oscar Grant. And this particular piece deals with a movie, a motion picture that was written by a brother. Um, I can't think of the brother's name. It's here. Uh, written and directed by a brother named Ryan Coogler who grew up in Oakland and Richmond, California. And of course the, the uh, movie is called Fruitvale. Fruitvale the movie. Will the world feel it like we do in Oakland? That's the title of the article that appears in the Final Call newspaper. And this article is written by uh, Pendarvis Harshaw. And I'm going to just read the first paragraph and then we'll get you on out of here. The crowd let out a monstrous applause just before the private screen of Fruitville Station began inside Oakland's Grand Lake Theater. The majority of the audience then turned away from the screen towards the back left corner of the room to honor Oscar Grant's mother. I saw her acknowledge the crowd with a wave of her hand. So this is dealing with the uh, premiere of the movie Fruitvale, which deals with um, the life and murder of our brother Oscar Grant, which is a good picture. And this is the brother who plays him, whose name is Michael B. Jordan, uh, wonderful young actor. But I just want to plug it because I think it's very important. I think it's very important for us to go and see this movie, um, Fruitvale. And I have not seen the movie myself as of yet, but I definitely plan on seeing it. But I want to go ahead and give it a plug before I actually see it. Why? Why? Why, Brother Herman? Why would you plug a movie that you haven't even seen? That seems uh, wrong or disingenuous. No. We should go and see the movie because, for one, we don't want to forget about Oscar Grant. If you are familiar with the story of Oscar Grant, Oscar Grant is the brother who was in a BART station in Oakland or the Bay Area in California in a prone position with his hands cuffed behind his back, laying face down. And an officer pulls out his gun and shoots him dead in front of witnesses. 
And the most uh, absurd thing about this whole situation is that officer got off. Remember what I was saying about uh, our brother Trayvon Martin in this justice system. You can't get s s justice in this system. That's why separation is the key. But anyway, we don't want to forget this story, man, because we're all potentially Oscar Grant. If you're black in America, you're, you are potentially Oscar Grant. You are potentially Trayvon Martin. So we should never forget this. Right? So I want to say that on the strength of that, we should go and see this movie. But I also want to say that, like I said, it's written and directed by a young brother um, in Oakland, Ryan Cooler. And so we want to make sure that we're going to support him and help to make his movie a blockbuster. And uh, according to the article, and you want to read it again, it appears on page 29, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Now I'm going to have to work something up to go and see it because I, I really don't like crying at movies, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and see it anyway in support of our brother, and I think you should too. But anywho... That's this condensed version of the final call news hour. Again, pick up this issue and you can pick it up at Supreme Styles and the at located at 7520 East Colfax Avenue in Denver, Colorado, or go to www.finalcall.com and get the online version. I'm your man Herman Muhammad. Hey, remember, um, Check out the time and what must be done. This is where it's at. And you want to follow the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan at Louis Farrakhan. Hashtag the time. Hashtag Farrakhan. And join Minister Farrakhan's Twitter army. He has a number of Twitterers. He, he has, I don't know how many followers, but uh, a Twitter army that is increasingly, increasingly, increasingly growing and growing and growing and growing. And you want to be a part of that join that and also let me plug me real quick your brother Herman Muhammad wrote a book it's called how to get rich in the barber cosmetology game handbook written by yours truly Herman Muhammad you can go to a site called lulu l u l u dot com and get this book support me it's dealing with business entrepreneurship uh, particularly in the barber cosmetology industry but the principles apply in any entrepreneurial endeavor so support me again go to lulu.com l-u-l-u.com and just search the title and it'll pop right up support your brother and lastly follow me like supreme style barbershop at facebook.com and follow at brother herman on twitter with that Brothers and sisters, I am out. I want to say I love you. Peace. Stay black. Stay strong. Until next time, remember, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Peace. And I'm out. Yeah. Nowadays it's hard to stay sober I mix that dark and that cola And now we only smoking the finest Got in good with the growers Cause when you start playing for keeps It's hard to keep your composure That's why I keep my grass cut And keep a beam on you cobras Trying to go from digging for changing sofas To whipping rovers like Yola From stays on a table To using a gold-plated coaster From being cropped out they pictures To autographing they posters I emptied out that shoebox Told myself young nigga focus Cause ain't no nigga like me Be honest I'm real as it gets a little too honest for some, but you too hooked to 